All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be solving the equation x minus four to the power of four is equal to x to the power of four. So my only variable in this equation is x, so that's what I'm gonna be solving for. And now for my solution, what I'm first gonna do is rewrite this equation as x minus four to the power of two times two is equal to x to the power of two times two. And the reason I did this is because now I can use the property a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m times n. So using this property, I can rewrite x minus four to the power of two times two as x minus four to the power of two to the power of two. And I can rewrite x to the power of two times two as x to the power of two to the power of two. Now from here, this is gonna turn into x minus four to the power of two to the power of two minus x to the power of two to the power of two is equal to zero because I just subtracted x to the power of two to the power of two on both sides. And now I can use the property a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a is x minus four squared and b is x squared. So this turns into x minus four squared plus x squared times x minus four squared minus x squared is equal to zero. Now from here, I'm gonna expand x minus four squared. So x minus four squared is equal to x squared minus ax plus 16. So over here, I get x squared minus ax plus 16 plus x squared times x squared minus ax plus 16 minus x squared is equal to zero. Now x squared plus x squared is two x squared. So I get two x squared minus ax plus 16 times, these two cancel out, negative ax plus 16 is equal to zero. And now I get two equations, two x squared minus ax plus 16 is equal to zero and negative eight x plus 16 is equal to zero. Now from here, I'm gonna factor out two. So I get two, two times x squared minus four x plus eight is equal to zero. And from here, for this equation, I have x eight x is equal to 16. So if I divide both sides by two, I get x equals two. So that's one solution. And now continuing this, if I divide both sides by two, I get x squared minus four x plus eight is equal to zero. And if I use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac all over two a. In this case, a is one, b is negative four and c is eight. So I have x is equal to negative of negative four plus or minus the square root of b squared. So negative four squared, which is 16, minus four times a, which is one, times c, which is eight, all over two a, so two times one. And this turns into four plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 32 over two, which turns into four plus or minus the square root of negative 16 over two. 
So now, the square root of negative 16, I can rewrite that as the square root of 16 times the square root of negative 1 over 2. And the square root of negative 1 is equal to i. So I get x is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of 16i over 2. And the square root of 16 is equal to 4. So I get x is equal to 4 plus or minus 4i over 2 which turns into 2 plus or minus 2i. So, my three solutions of x are x is equal to 2 plus 2i, x is equal to 2 minus 2i, and x is equal to 2. All right, so in this equation, I have one to the power of x is equal to three. So this might seem like an impossible equation, right? Because how can one be to the power of any number and equal, th equal to three if one to the power of even a million is still equal to one? Well, let's try to solve this equation the way we would solve any other exponential equation. The first thing I would do is take the natural log or ln on both sides. So I get ln one to the power of x is equal to ln three. Now, if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front, so this can equal b times ln a. In this case, I have ln one to the power of x, and I can move x to the front. So now I get x times ln1 is equal to ln3. And now if I divide both sides by ln1, these two cancel out, and I get x is equal to ln3 over ln1. Now, if you guys already didn't know, ln1 is equal to 0. So I get x is equal to ln3 over 0. And you can't take any number and divide it by zero because that's undefined, meaning this has no solution. So that method doesn't work. However, this, mean, this just means that there are no real solutions. But there are different types of solutions. So what I'm going to do to solve this equation is first, let's recall Euler's formula. And if you guys don't know what this is, it states that if I have something in the form e to the power of i times theta, this is equal to cos of theta plus i times sine of theta. And I know this may seem a little complicated right now, but just bear with me. So let's say that theta here is equal to zero. So if theta equals zero, then I get e to the power of i times zero is equal to cos of zero plus i times sine of zero. So then I get e to the power of 0 is equal to 1, cos of 0 is 1, plus sine of 0 is 0, and 0 times i is 0. So 1 plus 0. And e to the power of 0 is 1, so I get 1 is equal to 1 plus 0. Now, what if we say that theta is equal to 2k pi? k being a constant. So it could equal any number, 1, 2, or 3. So if I plug this in, I get e to the power of i times 2k pi is equal to cos of 2k pi plus i times sine of 2k pi. Now, what if k 
is equal to 1. What if our constant k is equal to 1? Then I get e to the power of i times 2 pi is equal to cosine of 2 pi plus i times sine of 2 pi. Now, cosine of 2 pi is 1, and sine of 2 pi is 0. So I get this is equal to 1. Now, if k is equal to 2, I would get cos of 4 pi plus i of sine 4 pi. Cos of 4 pi is 1, and i times sine of 4 pi is again 0. And if I do the same thing with 3, I would again get 1 plus 0. So this pattern continues, and it keeps on equaling 1, no matter what value of k we get. So we can say that e to the power of i times 2k pi, this is equal to 1 no matter what value of k we have. So now this means that we can substitute this in back to our original equation, which is 1 to the power of x is equal to 3. This is our original equation, and we can substitute in 1 for e to the power of i times 2k pi. So now I get e to the power of i times 2k pi to the power of x is equal to 3. And this is my new equation. So now to solve this, I'm going to do what I did at the start. I'm going to take the natural log or ln on both sides. So I get ln e to the power of i times 2k pi to the power of x is equal to ln of 3. Now, if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front, so I get b times ln a. In this case, I can move x to the front, so I get x times ln e to the power of i times 2k pi is equal to ln 3. Now, I'm going to use this property again and move this to the front as well. So I get i times 2k pi times ln e is equal to ln 3. And ln e, ln e, these two cancel out. So now I'm left with i times 2k pi is equal to ln 3. Sorry, and I also have x. Now I'm going to divide both sides by i times 2k pi. So then these cancel out, and I get x is equal to ln3 over i times 2k pi. Now I'm going to multiply this by i over i, which is the same thing as 1. So I get x is equal to i times ln 3 over i times i is i squared. And if you guys already know, i squared is equal to negative 1. So over negative 2k pi. And k in this case can't equal 0. Because if k over 0, this is wouldn't work. So this is my solution to this equation.